Hello there, my name is Jurko and I'm the author of the Redfish project and in this video I would like to present it to you. I've intended to create simple, scalable and sustainable architecture where you don't need to set a webpack, Babel, Docker, Nginx, virtual machines and stuff like that. I've already tried different approaches and would like to share my design with you. Redfish consists of the landing page, web application, GraphQL API and admin panel. The first two are independent React applications. Gatsby.js is standing behind the landing page and web application is initiated by Create React App Starter. The GraphQL API is produced using Graphene Django library and appears to be the endpoint of the Django server as well as the admin panel. The most effortless and inexpensive way to continuously deliver and integrate Redfish is the serverless approach. On the left side we have Netlify and Zeitnow serverless platforms for the front-end and back-end parts respectively. These platforms are not only easy to configure but also allow us to start for free and pay only if and as we grow. And that is very good for startups. For example, I pay nothing to deliver Redfish. On the opposite side, we have our GitHub public repository and local instance. Assume you made some changes. Once you push them to the GitHub, the Netlify will fetch the repo and update production builds instantly. But the backend deployment is a bit different. The problem is we can't store our credentials in a public repository. We should either make it private or deploy changes locally. We pick the second approach here and to achieve that we use pythonnow.py script. Execute it and expect a successful update. The starting point for users is the landing page. It created with the Gatsby.js, so far the best React framework for our needs. It has a very convenient CEO component, server-side rendering, plugins like Gas.js and a lot of other benefits. Once a user gets inside, they should authenticate to continue. Apollo client sends their credentials to the GraphQL API, the server generates an access token and sends it back where it gets stored. Since the domain of the application is different, we should somehow transfer credential there. After redirecting a user, we establish a connection by mounting an iframe with the landing page source. It sends credentials to a parent page and once they saved, private data will be fetched. As well as the landing page, the application has Apollo client as a query and state management system. That means we should not use Redux or any other state managers here. Apollo cultivates a habit of handling data by GraphQL. Now let's review the final part the Django server. It connected to the PostgreSQL database and S3 bucket static folder provided by AWS. To send emails we should have an SMTP server. I decided to use my Gmail account for that but there are a lot of different services you can use instead. To manage the authentication workflow we use Django REST of library connected to the GraphQL API. And I guess that's all I wanted to say, read the documentation and it would be great to hear some feedback from you. Down below you can find me on Twitter and GitHub. Bye.